Um, uh, I'll next introduce uh, Professor Charles Rosenberg, who is the uh, Ernst C. Monrad Professor of the Social Sciences and Professor in the History of Science Department here at the Faculty of Art and Science at Harvard. Uh, Charles Rosenberg is, is, is widely acknowledged to be the single most preeminent historian of medicine in the United States. This was confirmed on Saturday night at the meeting of the Association of the, uh, the American Association of the History of Medicine, where he received the Lifetime Distinction Award. Uh, in addition to that, he's received the William H. Welch Medal, um, the George Sarton Medal for Lifetime Achievement from the History of Science Society, and a number of other awards for his status as a scholar and his numerable books. Um, the first and uh, arguably most influential uh, cholera years, United States in 1832, 1849, and 1866, will celebrate its 50th anniversary as an influential, influential text in uh, 2012. And uh, the color years will go on for a second because in this, uh, Professor Rosenberg establishes how the sphere of medicine and health is essential to understanding uh, social history of the United States, the cultural history of the United States, and the political history of the United States. And it's in those contexts that uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing his comments on uh, I'm studying this intersection of social, cultural, and political history that is the institution of the FDA. Uh, thank you for that uh, generous introduction. I sort of feel it should be a memorial address. Um, and I'll be brief. I, I did notice uh, Dr. Schwarz did talk about not just the history book. Uh, uh, I think. It is a history book, which I think is quite a, quite a good thing. Um, and it's deeply historical, which I think is also a good thing. There's also another way in which this book is historical, and that is it addresses a subject that is of very great relevance to so many people today. Uh, not only in terms of people's expectations or fantasies about cure, but also in the sense that in an era of screening and chronic disease, almost everyone above a certain age is at risk uh, for drug dependency, if we want to call, call it that. So th this is, is, an, is a, uh, it's not just another bureau in the uh, great constellation of great tropical rainforest of uh, inside the Beltway agencies. Um, it has a, a kind of, it's a, it's a bureau, but it's a bureau with medical characteristics. And I think those medical characteristics are important. And I can't, I, I'm a sort of an outsider. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a pharmacologist. I'm not an administrator. I'm not a lawyer. But so I, I just want to make some general reactions to the book. Um, and reflect, so I call them reflections. Um, the f first, I guess, is that I think that the, the term, uh, I keep thinking about the term reputation and about the term audience and audience structure. And I can see why it's very useful. On the other hand, there's something kind of static about it. It's, it I, I'm not happy with it entirely. Um, in the sense that there is a, I think the picture you get as you read the book with increasing power is, I would call it a kind of ecological or mutually constituted complex view in which the arrows keep going back and forth in a very complicated way. And the metaphor of reputation implies performer in the Goffmanian, if we'll put in that term sense, an audience implies consumer when, in fact, they're much more complicated and interactive than that. And that the people in the agency are scientists not there, or, or lawyers. They're, tra they're part of other disciplinary <coughs> communities. At the same time, they're in a certain social location and have a certain social identity. So that um, uh, maybe this is a, uh, a kind of petty uh, distinction, but I think in terms of thinking about how the system works, the, the emphasis on the, sort of the, I call it the ecological view, is, seems to me very helpful. The, the other thing that I kept thinking about is, I guess you might call it a functionalist uh, perspective. If you think about the system, I called it a, 
uh, maybe system is too dignified a term, but we do seem to get from one day to the next, that the Bureau has, or the, uh, the administration, the capital says that it's in this book, has a, a very important, what I would call system maintenance function. Uh, and I, maybe because I've been reading the newspapers too much the last uh, year, I keep thinking of M Moody's or uh, Standard & Poor's, that uh, they provide a necessary legitimation um, to create inflection points from which you get from one point to another, which you can take things or take ideas and turn them into things. You can take business plans and turn them into reality. But you need that function to keep the system both legitimate and functioning. And there's a special thing about medical legitimacy, which I, I, I think may almost get lost in it because it's so obvious, and I just wanted to underline it. And that is that, yes, there's two pieces of it that make the the, the Bureau special, not like every other Bureau. One is that it <coughs> gestures towards science. And since the progressive era, there's always been, uh, it goes and comes, but the notion of objectivity, of transcendence, is built into the idea of scientific ideas, practices, and procedures. And I think that that's embedded in how we think about medicine. And medicine not only is supposed to be ideally objective, it also deals with life and death and with people's hopes for their future, their children's future. And uh, we don't want to have room for contingency, negotiation, uh, randomness in that part of our life. Uh, so that it, there is something special about, about the, this, this bureau even if it functions like every other predatory animal or organism in the great forest. Uh, you know, looking for advantage, stabilizing its niche, moving, moving from one day to the next. And um, I think that uh, what I've said is not meant to be a, a criticism because I think this is a, a book that people are going to be reading for a long time and historians are going to be reading uh, for a long time. But I think that, that I wanted to underline certain pieces of it that are implicit and maybe not uh, as explicit as, as, they might, as they might be. Um, and one of the things that struck me uh, finally, and I, I'm, I'm trying to be brief, is that we, even though we fight about the, the Bureau, um, you know, there's left wing, there's right wing, there's uh, various kinds of market-oriented, non-market-oriented attitudes. Uh, everyone has argues from the point of view of hope. It's not just reputation, it's also hope. And, that, and whether it's cynical or idealistic or ingenuous, even attacks on the cumbersomeness, you know, we've got to get these mar drugs to market, they're based on the notion that those drugs will help people or may well help people, and that they'll probably work. So that it, it has a very special kind of mission and a very special kind of social leverage, almost, because of that identity. That's, that's all I want to really say. Thank you.